This is the first lesson on the normal distribution. It's uh, a different type of distribution to ones you've met already. So in your normal maths lessons, you would have already have met the binomial distribution. And the binomial distribution we use for discrete data. If you've done further maths, you would have met the Poisson distribution. Uh, which also used to um, you can use to model uh, problems to do with discrete data. The normal distribution, however, is used for continuous data. It's the first distribution that you would have met where it's used to uh, model continuous data. So you'll see these um, little graphs at the top. So here, this one here, that's uh, uh, what a binomial distribution can look like. So you might have, I don't know, 10 sided dice, or you have um, like 10 choices. What's the probability you're going to pick exactly four of those things? And you can see each bar is separate because it's discrete data. Whereas the normal distribution is used to model continuous data. So you can see here. We have this graph, there are no bars. We just have this continuous um, graph. And um, it's really useful for working out the uh, probability of different things happening where we're dealing with continuous data. So for example, um, let's say the height of all 40-year-old um, women might be distributed normally so most women are going to be of a certain height as you go towards the lower heights and taller heights you're going to have less of them yeah so um, you'll see this shape a lot you'll be drawing loads of these yeah like this and it's got lots of features yeah so first of all it's symmetrical yeah and you'll see that um, here where it says where the the mean the median and the mode are all in the center and normally we're talking about the mean so the mean is in the center here I'll use that symbol it's a symmetrical distribution so um, mine's not drawn particularly well there are other drawings on here of the, of the distribution but you can see it's a symmetrical shape and in the center is the mean so on this particular uh, one here, there's the mean. So the mean height, it looks like it's 175 centimeters. So it's symmetrical with the mean in the middle. Um, the other thing is that um, what we're interested in is the mean, where the center is, and the variance. How far is it spread out? So they're the two things that we're interested in with the normal distribution. With the binomial distribution, the two things that we were interested in were n and p. So the number in our sample and the probability of success. With the normal distribution, the two things that we're interested in are the mean, yeah, that's the value in the middle, and the variance. Now, because we're interested in those two things, our notation is slightly different. So remember we had something like this. When we had the binomial distribution, we'd have two numbers in brackets, n and p. Yeah. With the normal distribution, the two numbers in the brackets will be the mean and the variance. So they're the two numbers that we're going to be dealing with in our calculation. So looking here, if you look at the notation here, and you see it's telling us it's a normal distribution, a mean of 175 and a variance of 12 squared. What that means also is that the, the variance is 12 squared. The standard deviation is 12. Yeah. The shape of it, it's what we call bell shaped. Yeah, you can see it's belt shaped like a bell. And it's got asymptotes at each end. In other words, 
these little tails at the end here they don't actually touch the axis the x-axis is an asymptote so those tails they get closer and closer they're not my one they get closer and closer to the axis but they never actually touch it so that diagram is a bit deceiving so we've got these asymptotes at each end and these tails what we call tails they actually go on forever also the total area of that graph all this area here is one that's really handy because probabilities are out of one aren't they so if we can find the area we've got the probability so the area under the curve the total area is one okay then the main things it talks about points of inflection where basically the uh, gradient uh, changes from being above the curve to below the curve that's what we call a, a point of inflection um, but there's a few other features as well because the total area is one within one standard deviation of the um, mean so if I were to so here I've got 175 is the mean if I were to go 12 backwards and 12 forwards from 175 so if I was to take away 12 from 175 add 12 to 175 and look at just that area that would be 68 percent of the total area under the graph so within one standard deviation we get 68% of the area. Within two standard deviations from the mean, so looking at my um, graph down here again, so two standard deviations from the mean would be 24, because one standard deviation is 12. So if I added 24 to 120, uh, 175 and took away 24 from 175, I would have 95% of the area. So within two standard deviations, I've already got 95% of the area. And in fact, nearly all of the data, nearly all of it, in fact, 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. Yeah, so there's lots going on here. So we've got this normal distribution which we can use to model continuous data. Um, it's bell-shaped, it's symmetrical, the mean is in the middle. We're interested in the variance uh, along with the mean. The total area is one. Within st one standard deviation of the mean, we have 68% um, of the area. Within two standard deviations, 95% of the area. And within three standard deviations, literally all of the data, 99.7% of the data, okay? So let's move on and look at some um, problems that we've got here. <clears throat> and whenever I do these types of questions, I would always draw a graph. Now it's really important that you to know that you can work out the these probabilities the area under the graph using your calculator. But if we realize that we're dealing with certain amounts of standard deviation from the mean, we can actually work out what the area is of that. So we're just gonna highlight these here to um, um, highlight these and then we might be able to use those and work out the answer so i'm always going to be drawing a diagram when i do these questions so part a it says the probability that x is greater than eight now this question is a normal distribution i can see it up there where this random variable has a mean of eight and a variance of 0.2 squared so i'll write down here i'll write them down the mean is eight 
the variance is 0 0.2 squared and because the standard deviation is a square root of the variance the variance is 0 0.2 or the standard deviation is 0 0.2 right let's draw a diagram for this right so there's my normal distribution the mean is 8 so let's stick that in 8 and the question says work out the probability that x is greater than 8 okay so this is just like a number line so all numbers going this way are going to be bigger than 8 all numbers going this way are less than 8 so if I shade the area I'm trying to work out I'm trying to find that area now because of all the features of the normal distribution it's symmetrical the mean is in the middle so is the mode and the median that means that this area here is just 50 percent so there's my answer I don't need a calculator because 8 is in the middle and I'm finding greater than 8 um, it's 50 percent now just to note that actually this and this are the same thing when we're dealing with continuous data this greater than or equal to doesn't make any difference yeah because we're dealing with continuous data and later on you'll find out that if we were to try and work out this it's zero we have a paradox and you might think oh, hang on that doesn't make sense so that's maybe something for you to look into right part b um, again I'm going to draw a diagram it says find a probability that x is between 7.8 and 8.2 so I'm going to put my mean in the middle again I'm going to mark in where 7.8 is remember this is only a sketch so it doesn't have to be to scale and here's my 8.2 and the inequality says find the area between those two so i'm trying to find all of this area here yeah now the gap between that and that is 0 0.2 and the gap between that and that is also 0 0.2 and what you may have noticed is that is one standard deviation 0 0.2 is one standard deviation so basically we've got a graph where we've got our mean in the middle we've gone up to the mean plus a standard deviation and we've gone down to a mean minus the standard deviation and that should be 0 0.2 actually let's use the symbol so mean plus standard deviation mean minus a standard deviation right so we've gone up a standard deviation and down a standard deviation and what does the rule say the yellow highlighted bit approximately 68 percent of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean so straight away i can write the answer as 68 percent that area is 68 percent because it's one standard deviation if it was 8 to 8.4 and it went down from 8 to 7.6 that would be two standard deviations so that area would be 95 percent yeah so all um, from this information that's here yeah now that's basically it yeah I might do one more example before you do that exercise on pages 40 to 41 so let's say let's call this example C let's say that um, um, it's a normal distribution with a mean of 10 and a variance of 0 0.3 squared so mean equals 10 variance 0 0.3 squared standard deviation 0 0.3 and let's say the question says can you find the probability um, of x being between um, 10.6 and 9.4 let's say you want to work out the probability so again diagram 
fantastic normal distribution curve there. 10 in the middle. 10.6 here. 9.4 there. And the question says, work out this area here in the middle. Yeah? Now what do we notice? I notice that that, both ways, is 0 0.6 that way and 0 0.6 this way. And what's that? That's two standard deviations. Two standard deviations. So I'm basically trying to find the area two standard deviations away from the mean. And uh, if we just go back and check, two standard deviations from the mean is, um, I think that was 90 something percent. Yeah, that's 95%. So uh, what that means is, is that this area here is 95%. So you are now in a position to do exercise 3A from the Applied Year 2 book, pages 40 and 41.